Okay, step one, how to make a vintage box and or vintage look um, on any object. This one will be using paint, water, and then the, the item you're gonna use. First you'll need a nice box. Um, you can either make your own little crate and or whatever wood objects you're gonna use. Uh, I've got this one from Target for like six bucks. So super cheap, um, but you can make it look like it's really, really nice. So that's the first step. Get yourself a good box um, and some good paint. When you get the paint, you're gonna mix the paint to be a little bit more water-based. Um, and that's gonna give you that vintage look without having to sand early on. We're gonna do a little bit of both. We're gonna sand plus do a water-based paint. So um, I got my paint. I had a paint that I tried to buy for my bathroom. Really expensive paint, but um, this paint will be amazing because it'll hold up for time. And plus it's gonna go in the bathroom anyways. So we got our gray paint mixed with about one third of water, just water from the faucet. Um, mix it up, stir it up, and then you'll have a nice water-based paint which will go on nicely before it dries. We'll smear it. So I'll paint and I'll get back to you. And the strokes for these are simple. This has a lot of paint on it just because it was from the first one. That's plenty. So I'll do that around the whole box. And don't forget, it's okay to not do perfect paint because the point of this is to look vintage. So when it looks vintage, it kind of looks like a bad paint job to be honest with you. So don't worry about how great it goes on. Just make sure you get it in the deeper areas because it's the high areas that are gonna actually make it stand out. Those will get sanded or wiped off. So this paint's getting a little dry on me now, which is good. I'll keep going around that outside here. Usually I paint the inside first, but this is just for the video. Yeah. And step two, always get yourself a little helper. Emmett, come on over here. Oh, can't see him. But I'll show you him in a second. So that's on there. I'm just gonna do a little bit more because I'm running out of water there and paint. Now to cover the whole area. Daddy. Yeah. Oh, he's sticking his tongue down it. Covered. Not the best of light. Working on that right now, but two. But there's our gray, if you can see it. And then a rag. I've already done one box, so this rag has a little bit of gray on it, but a nice clean rag. Uh, painter's rag's perfect. And I'm just gonna rub the paint before it dries. Again paint into the deeper areas and what you're rubbing off is the high rise area. Yeah. Are you gonna see in this? Look at him sticking his tongue out. Stick your tongue out. Hey you little punk. He's painting too. So rubbing off the high rise areas. And again, if you can see this, there's some really deep spots here. I'll go back and sand that. There's two ways you can do this too I forgot to mention. You can do a paintbrush or a rag. We're actually doing both. Yeah but I stick your tongue out. Um, and then we'll, I'll show you a way to dent the project too. So for the vintage look, they usually have little dents and scratches on it, obviously with the smeared paint too. Um, this one, we're gonna go back and sand like I said it before. So going through, sanding the edges, roughing it up, putting a little dents in it with a hammer and a nail, which I'll show you how to do too, um, to get that nice vintage look. But most people might be satisfied with this. This is what I would call a cleaner vintage look. There's no dents and scratches, it's just washed paint. Um, Give me that look right there, that's probably the best look. Okay, so for the vintage look, what we'll need is any sharp object really, but a nail. I use an actual screw nail, um, sorry, a screw that has ridges on the side for scratches and then a nice sharp point there for actual dents in the box and then a hammer. Uh, most people think this might be hard, but it's really not. So grab the spot you want. We're gonna do the side here, what you'll do. So from right here, you take that nail and use the point to nail it into the use the sides and the actual grooves of the nail to scratch the wood. Um, and you can even put the nail on the angle um, and really dig it in and get some chips. Next, I'll grab the hammer, um, which will allow you to put really big like gashes or dents in it and then hit it as well. Um, that's my wife's hammer, I got her. A little small, little one, good for crafts. Something I just thought about too. You're gonna get to a point where you're like, how do I paint the inside of the bottom? You usually paint all of the outside and the top edges and the inside. So you can rest the box down to do the inside. And then once that dries or you're comfortable with it drying a little bit, flip it over. I'm usually holding it if it's small like this, but then you can paint the bottom as a second step. 
you will get overlaps on your edges, that's fine. We're gonna go back and brush it off. And again, this is not the cleanest of looks because it is that vintage look. So the overlaps are fine. In fact, nice you can even go back over where you've already gone, which you can do if you feel like it's you wiped off too much with that rag. Um, or sand it too much with your sandpaper. So again, as soon as that's on, literally you just saw it lie, that's painted. I'm already wiping. So this paint's a little thicker. It's a primer in one. If you had like an acrylic or even a child kind of safe paint, like a one from craft store, you'd want to wipe it off a little earlier. I don't do the vintage on the bottom just because you don't really need it. Um, where I would do it maybe is these bottom corners, but that's kind of usually where it is. You can also add little metal pieces, little bracket corners that you get at uh, Home Depot, uh, Michael's. Kind of what you'd see like in a book or a journal, almost more or less. There's the vintage marks. And again, I'm gonna go back and sand. Best way to get the vintage look is to sand. It's to sand these edges and reshape those. Check out Emmett's yellow paint. You guys see it down here? So this is done. Literally gonna go put it outside and dry. It takes about 10 minutes to dry on a hot day like this in San Diego. Um, but wherever you're at, if you're somewhere else, you can also get an actual heat gun. You're like $35 at Home Depot. You get a heat gun, you can sit here and dry it. Then you can do your next steps if you want to sand. It's best to let it dry, obviously for a couple hours and for the day. Um, but like I said, it's 73 degrees outside San Diego today with sun. So I can go put it in the sun and it's gonna dry pretty quick. Okay, so like I said, we're doing two. We did the wash rag, water-based paint, and then also sandpaper, 150 grit. Um, most of the time with a vintage box, a true vintage box, like one that actually is an item that's just been around for a while, is usually just beat up on the outsides where things have been hitting it. Um, when you're forcing the vintage look like we are, um, the sandpaper helps great. So for this, we just, gonna do the edges um, think of it as like a block letter and this is really gonna block out the box so you might be questioning the job you've done so far on the item when you first start it but as you can see you're starting to get that highlight which is that really the great look of it so I'm just gonna do all the edges I'm sorry for this I'm just folded I have one strip of sandpaper that I cut out from a square that I came in. I fold it a couple times and go here. You might want to wear a padded glove. Um, with the COVID-19 going down, um, it's actually been really eye-opening because I usually use latex gloves, but I bought these um, reusable gloves. Um, and even though they get paint on them, I can still reuse them and they dry fine. They don't get all stiff. So these have actually been great. So as you can see, I'm a messy worker as is. Um, so usually would have two latex gloves on, but I've learned that I can just wear these over and over for all my projects. So whether it be for padding when I'm actually sawing or sanding um, or for holding the sandpaper, what will happen when you're sanding sometimes is you're holding it so hard, you'll start to create a blister on your finger. So wearing one of these will help with that. Um, this one, I'm not gonna be pushing too hard or you can use a sanding block if you have that. I prefer sandpaper. To me, the sanding blocks just don't do it for me. Um, so just a good old fashioned sandpaper. Um, like I said, the gloves, these were four dollars. I go on to talk about how the gloves were pretty cheap and again, yeah, very cost uh, saving and able to use those gloves multiple times with paint. I haven't tried it with stain just yet, but I think it will um, do the job for stain too. They might get a little hard but and sticky, but then I would just let them dry overnight. Um, but yeah, so it didn't just go crazy on sanding. So we really sand down the edges. I start to talk about how a sander would be really helpful here. Um, but again, this is a home project for someone who's pretty new to it um, and how you start out. So as you do more projects, you'll begin to invest in items. Um, but the main point is bringing out the corners here and you really highlight the actual box. So the box might not look amazing when you're going at it, but as you start to sand here, it really brings out the edges and the actual outline of the box. Um, what the sander would help with too is this paint was really, really thick. So um, I had to do pretty good elbow grease to get down to the, the spots to bring out the actual vintage look. Um, but 
yeah, a sander would have been really easy on this one. I would have knocked it out in about one minute. This is my new belt sander I got to the side here. Um, really good for when you're doing small pieces, um, especially for smoother edges. Um, it's been really helpful in, in making things a little bit faster for me. Coming from my right side over here, really hitting this box, you can see the highlights. So when you're inside or wherever you're at, these highlights are gonna stand out nice for you. The only spot I'm missing is in here on the handle. Again, bringing out the highlights. Throw a chip on there every now and then, it's always cool. So yeah, that one's pretty much done. One way to avoid having to do the sanding would be more water on your mix. So I did about one third, so one to three ratio of paint and water. So three, three parts paint, one part water. What you could do is almost half and half, or if not the opposite, so a ton of water. Um, so three parts water, one part paint. Be really liquidy, but it could also uh, save a step of doing this. I like this because I know it's gonna penetrate. Brown? Oh, you ran out? Because the thicker paint's really gonna dive into the deep areas and then I can go back and sand. So um, I like to do it more than enough to start and then go back and make up for it. Um, you can see right here, this is really solid still. So I'll highlight here, highlight here. I'm gonna get this middle section. By now you get the gist of just kind of the basics of making this vintage box. Kept sanding for a while here. Um, really just bringing out the edges, I'll continue to say that, and then also sanding down the actual flat parts. Uh, but the focus is on the edges, that's really gonna give it that nice look. Um, I'll kind of let the video just roll out for now. Um, I go back and compare the boxes, but the big thing is, um, you know, you went from a, a $7 box to what's looking like a, you know, $25, $30 box. It's not really about the price of what it looks like, but it's just a, a cooler look. Um, it's more satisfying. It's, it's a nice piece in your house now. Um, here's the original box.